Okay, let's look at uh, five MCQs. We're going to run through them pretty quickly. But I want you to get a good idea of uh, typical MCQs that you might see regarding small bowel obstruction. So let's let's start. A 64-year-old man comes to the emergency department because of a two-day history of uncontrollable nausea, vomiting, and generalized abdominal pain. His temperature is 36.8, pulse 112, respirations 20, and blood pressure is 104 over 64. Physical examination shows a distended abdomen and decreased bowel sounds that is tympanic, tympanitic to percussion. An abdominal radiograph is obtained and is shown below, which you can't see. Which of the following is the most common underlying cause of the patient's symptoms? A. Adhesions. B. Crohn disease. C. Intersusception. D. Strangulated hernia or E. Tumor. And we're going to see something very similar in all these questions. The answer here is adhesions. So here's the major takeaway. Small bowel obstructions are most commonly caused by bowel adhesions and typically is characterized by an acute abdomen. A strangulated obstruction will be characterized by fever, tachycardia, and peritonism and is a surgical emergency. Plain abdominal x-rays with supine and upright views is the best diagnostic tool for bowel obstructions. Okay, next one. A 30-year-old woman, Gravita 1, Para 1, comes to the office because of colicky abdominal pain for 12 hours. She states that along with the pain, she has felt nauseated and vomited twice. She has never experienced these symptoms before, but her medical history includes appendectomy two years ago. Her temperature is 36.5, pulse 87, respirations are 18, and blood pressure is 116 over 82. Examination shows abdominal distension. The abdomen is tender to palpation, especially in the right lower quadrant. Bowel sounds are present and high-pitched. There are no signs of peritonism. Which of the following is the most diagnosis? likely diagnosis? A. Ovarian cyst accident. B. Ruptured peptic ulcer. C. Small bowel obstruction. D. Ectopic pregnancy. Or E. Pyelonephritis. And the answer is... That's right, small bowel obstruction. Intestinal obstruction commonly occurs due to adhesion formation following abdominal and pelvic surgeries. Characteristic signs are abdominal distension and high-pitched bowel sounds. Let's go on to another. A 50-year-old woman comes to the emergency department with severe colicky abdominal pain and has wor that has worsened over the past 48 hours. She has a past history of endometriosis and a surgical history of appendectomy and a cesarean section. Physical examinations shows a distended abdomen that is tymp tympanitic to percussion. An abdominal radiograph is obtained as shown below, which you can't see. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? A. Constipation. B. Ovarian torsion. C. Pelvic inflammatory disease. D. Small bowel obstruction. Or E. Volvulus. So we know the answer is a bowel obstruction, which occurs mostly commonly in the small bowel and is most usually due to post surgical adhesions. Presentation includes colicky abdominal pain, distended abdomen, and history of abdominal surgery an abdomen that is tympanitic to percussion and has high-pitched bowel sounds. Are we seeing a pattern here? Next one. A 35-year-old man comes to the emergency department because of severe periumbilical colicky pain and abdominal distension for the past two days. He has nauseous and reports vomiting light green emesis eight times since yesterday morning. He has not had a bowel movement or passed any gas for the past three days. His past medical history is remarkable for ventral hernia repair five years ago. His temperature is 38, pulse 110, respirations are 24, and blood pressure 120 over 90. The abdomen is distended and mildly tender to deep palpation. Bowel sounds are high-pitched and tingling. 
which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? You know what it is, but the other choices are cholecystitis, Crohn disease, diverticulitis, or viral gastroenteritis. So again, we know that it is small bowel obstruction. And remember that bowel obstructions can be mechanical, e.g. due to masses or functional, for example, due to opioid use. Adhesions are the most common cause of small bowel obstructions in patients who have had a history of abdominal surgery. So what if you had answered uh, cholecystitis? Cholecystitis is inflammation of the gallbladder, usually caused by gallstones. Right upper quadrant or epigastric pain, nausea, vomiting, and anorexia are common symptoms. Abdominal examination is usually positive for guarding and Murphy sign. Gallstone ileus is a rare complication associated with cholecystitis that can cause bowel obstruction. Okay, last one. A 42-year-old Burmese man comes to the emergency department because of abdominal pain and vomiting for the past 24 hours. He has not had a bowel movement or passed flat test during that period. He returned from a week-long vacation in Myanmar three weeks ago. Physical examination shows a distended abdomen with a palpable mass over the right lower quadrant that changes in size and location. Oh, Which of the following round worms is most likely responsible for the patient's symptoms? A. Ankylostoma duodenali, denali, duodenali. B. Ascaris lumbricoides. C. Enterobiasis vermicularis. D. Strongyloides stercoralis. Or E. Trichinella. And the answer is. The answer is. Ascaris. So hold on one second, I'm going to play some music here, got to do something. Yeah? Yeah, Yeah, oh, we got family here, so... A small break. Ascaris limbricoides. Be back in a second. How much longer can you wait listening to this elevator music? Just a few more minutes.
Okay, we're back. Okay, so the answer, as I said, is Ascaris limbricoides. Major takeaway here is that Ascaris limbricoides is an intestinal nematode that commonly infects people in tropical environments. It is the most common pathogenic cause of bowel obstruction. Remember, Ascaris. The main explanation, Ascaris limbricoides is an intestinal nematode that lives in tropical countries with warm, wet climates. Infection can be transmitted through contaminated water or food. Adult worms usually inhabit the jejunum or ileum. A, um, limbricoides uh, infection causes nutritional deficiencies, but a sufficiently large mass of worms can cause bowel obstruction. In endemic areas, this kind of infection is responsible for up to one-third of all bowel obstructions. Symptoms consistent with acute sm small bowel obstruction, such as abdominal pain and obstipation, are usually present. What is obstipation? I'm supposed to say, wait, severe constipation includes obstipation, which is failure to pass stools or gas and fecal impaction which can progress to bowel obstruction and become life-threatening. Interesting. Emesis may contain worms and an, an abdominal mass may be palpated. Infection is usually diagnosed with stool microscopy. Albendazole, 400 mg or orally, once daily, or mebendazole, 100 mg orally, twice daily for three days, or 500 mg as a single dose. It's recommended to treat this Ascaris infection. Surgical intervention may be required if intestinal obstruction or hepatobiliary disease is involved. So there we have it. Thanks for tuning in and for listening to this elevator music. Med School Radio, coming to you from Tokyo.